All right, FAQ number 60. I'm going to do one more here today, and then I think I'm going to call it quits because I've done quite a few of them. Uh, I don't know if you see the smoke coming out of my ears yet or not, but uh, it'll start coming out after a while. <laughs> after a couple hours of doing these videos, I start getting a little, you know, out of it. I don't want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure I have plenty of energy before I continue here because I got a whole other list here that I'm working on. Um, but FAQ number 60, is the New Testament and the church age the same? Uh, no. Um, the New Testament began after the death of the testator, like we saw in the last uh, FAQ. It began after the death of the testator. Jesus dies on the cross. The New Testament begins. Now, the New Testament is basically three different dispensations, if you will. You have what we would call the church age, and that's even somewhat problematic. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you have the church age, you have the time of Jacob's trouble, and then you have the millennial kingdom, and actually then eternity goes into that. The reason I say the church age, that term is problematic, is because the term church actually just means a called out assembly. Um, now, there will be called out assemblies in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, and in fact, the word church, let me just look this up real quick here. Um, church is, is, is kind of a generic term like saint uh, you know, you know, um, I mean, Matthew 16, verse 18 is the first time that the word church appears in your New Testament. Uh, collection of books called the New Testament. Um, and Jesus is saying there, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. You know, and uh, uh, let me look up a thing here. And, you know, let me show you a verse here quickly just to kind of show you why the word church is kind of a generic term. Um, Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me him shall ye hear. Look at verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So the nation of Israel, when they're there in the wilderness in the book of Exodus, they're called the church. So, you know, to say the church age, well, I understand it dispensationally that, that we are the church, the, the body of Christ. You know, and I'm not, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's just like, well, it's an accepted term. I don't want to redefine things, you know, reinvent the wheel, as they say. Um, the church is just a generic term for called out assembly. It's a group of people that are saved. And it was actually used there in relation to Old Testament saints coming out of, you know, Exodus. And ironically, not all of them were even saved at that point in time. You know, they weren't all saved when they came out of Exodus. So, you know, it's problematic. But... Uh, the church and church age and the New Testament, in terms of um, the body of Christ, is that the New Testament? The New Testament is about the body of Christ. No, because the body of Christ is here for this time between, you know, when Jesus died on the cross and he resurrected from the dead, from then until the catching away of the body of Christ, which happens before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the body of Christ. Okay, I do not believe that people in the time of Jacob's trouble are members of the body of Christ. They're washing their robes. They themselves are not washed. Uh, Revelation chapter 7. So they're different there. There's a faith and somewhat works set up in the time of Jacob's trouble in that they can't take the mark of the beast. Okay, so it's a little bit different than what we have today. They don't have eternal security in that time. They're not sealed under the day of redemption. They're not actually part of Christ's body. Uh, the same way that Christians are today. We are Christians. Uh, they won't be. And of course, in the millennial kingdom, then you have another setup where they're not even you know, being saved by faith because they can see Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Uh, so there's no more mystery there that, oh, does God exist? You know, we have to believe by faith. No, that's not going to be there in the millennial kingdom. So those things are all part of that New Testament. The New Testament basically is defined as Jesus dies on the cross and he brings in this new relationship between God and man where salvation is achieved by believing in what Christ did. That's that New Testament. 
So that will be it for FAQ number 60. And uh, we will, I'm going to take a break here for uh, a little while and um, I'll get back to doing more of these and uh, I'm going to probably add to this list as well. But I thought, you know, I'll stop at 60 and then we'll go from there. And uh, it's kind of funny because a lot of these are starting to become more like, you know, asked questions more than frequently asked questions because <laughs> I'm getting some unique questions that I've never heard of before and, and I really enjoy this. This is, I know a lot of you have said it's been a real blessing, these FAQ videos. And it's actually been a blessing to me too because, um, you know, I have done a lot of research over the years and I have this continual feeling of like I have to continually, I mean, I will, let me say it, I have to continually come out with new sermons and I will cover things that I've covered before. We'll go over the same scriptures and things. So it's not like I'm an Athenian that's spending my time in nothing else but to hear or tell some new thing, Acts chapter 17. Uh, it's not like that, but it's. I feel like if I preached about it before, I don't want to preach on it again. And I'm not going to get out old sermons and re-preach them over and over again. You know, get the old classics out or something. Just listen to the old ones, you know. <laughs> They're available. Um, but, you know, I... I the, a lot of the research I've done, you know, it's just like uh, answering these questions in a, in a quick kind of a format without having to put together this huge big study that takes me two or three days to put together. Uh, I do like that. And of course, I'm trying to answer people's questions with a way of saying, okay, I've answered your question with some of the details, but if you want more of the details, go get the books. You know, go buy some books and read. You know, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, brightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, that comes from, it's going to take you years to really study the Bible. And it's it's not like, oh man, i got to study for years. It's a neat thing to study the word of God. It's a, it's a, it's great. And, you know, part of your study is actually going to be life application, where God is actually going to show you how things work out. You know, you'll read about how new versionists will attack you. And you'll think, wow, man, I never heard of these arguments before. And you'll go out and you'll start to witness to people and you'll run in, inevitably run into some new versionist. And all of a sudden you'll get attacked the way that you've read about them attacking. You know, and you'll go, wow, that really does happen. They really do say that. They really do believe this way. You know, God will actually show you, you know, your studies will actually come to pass many times. It's very fascinating. So, uh... I guess that's going to be it for now. FAQ number 60 ending here. And uh, we will be back uh, in a little while. And uh, I'll get back to these FAQs. But I want to make sure my list is bigger. Because I only have six on there right now. So I'm going to make sure i got a lot more of them. Um, but that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Please keep us in your prayers. And uh, keep sending in these FAQs.